Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Stephanie Yates Anyabuile, Steph Anya for short, and I'm a licensed associate marriage and family therapist. This channel is for those who are thinking about becoming therapists, as well as those who just want to use therapy insight to create their best life. And today's video I think could be useful for both groups. Today we're going to be talking about some activities that can help build both physical and emotional intimacy with couples. And I'm gonna share a little bit about one of the most important theorists in couples therapy. If you're curious, stay tuned. All right guys, so this video I'm doing around Valentine's Day and I was thinking really hard like how can I make a video that is both educational as well as entertaining and applicable to the everyday average viewer. And so I thought that sharing some activities that can be used all year round honestly, uh, but especially Valentine's Day to help build emotional and physical intimacy can be useful for people in relationships, those wanting to be in relationships, and those who are working with couples like I do every day. I'm going to start by sharing why this is important. Okay, so one of the most well-known theorists for couples therapy is John Gottman, who collaborated with his wife, Julie Gottman, to uh, discuss the Gottman method for couples. I'm not a certified Gottman therapist, but there are certified Gottman couples therapists. And basically, they have a completely different scientific approach to treating and working with couples. And I'm not doing a deep dive into their model today for my MFTs and training. If you would like me to do that, please let me know that in the comments below. But I just want to highlight some of the things that support why it's important to build emotional and physical intimacy with your partner, even though sometimes, honestly, it can be a bit uncomfortable and awkward. So one of the most important things that Gottman talks about is creating or building a fondness within your relationship. They're able to tell with pretty high accuracy couples that are going to end in divorce really based on the way that they deal with conflict and how they argue. Arguments are inevitable for relationships but there are ways to argue correctly. Ways that you can argue and not leave feeling more defeated in the relationship and more contempt for your partner and that is really what they focus on in their model. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what building fondness looks like so that we can put into perspective the activities that I'll be suggesting in just a few moments. So fondness in a relationship, according to them, it looks like maintaining a culture of appreciation and admiration for your partner, respecting them. Really, it boils down to focusing on what your partner is doing right instead of focusing on everything that they're doing wrong and trying to fix them. One of the biggest things that I really try to emphasize with my clients, especially if I'm seeing them as a couple, is the importance of knowing and supporting your partner's dreams. Ultimately, couples need to have shared purpose and meaning. And this is what Gottman emphasizes over and over again in his work is that the couple has to have a shared life goal, right? And the only way we can identify those things is if we're open and honest about our dreams and open and receptive to our partner's dreams. So that way we can see where do they align. Another concept that they talk about is really paying attention to the couple's body language. So they talk about turning toward your partner. And what that symbolizes is that you're listening that you are keyed in, you want to hear what they have to say and understand them, as opposed to turning away, which means you're ignoring them, not paying attention, or turning against, which means they approach you with something and you get annoyed. I was reading, I was doing something yelling and, and really rejecting them in a very vocal way is turning against your partner. So these activities that I'm going to suggest to you today, they will require you to really, really think and be intentional as you do these activities to make sure that you are turning toward your partner. Because I'll be honest with you, the thing about building intimacy is that it requires vulnerability. And somebody's vulnerable when that means that they're in a position where they could possibly get hurt. They let their defenses, their guard down right so if our partner is doing that with us it's our responsibility to hold that safe space for them and we want the same in return we want to be able to share our deep innermost secrets opinions with them and be able to have a soft place to land 
So today I'm going to share some activities with you, kind of going from the easiest to do all the way to the things that could possibly lead to an argument or fight. You can also use this as a scale to see how much vulnerability have you built in your relationship because if you're able to do that last thing with no concerns, no issues whatsoever, you're doing pretty good. And if you're not there yet, that's okay. Keep building and you will get there as long as you keep it in mind that you have to create a safe space within your relationship okay and part of having a safe space is being able to share when you're uncomfortable and so if you get to a point where you're not okay I encourage you to have a safe word my husband and I use the phrase let's just get the vacuum and that's from a, a story that I could I'd be happy to share later but basically something that has nothing to do with what you all are talking about that symbolizes to your partner hey I've had enough I need a break let's fix it or let's just chill all right so now let's jump into these activities and I'm gonna go easiest to the most challenging and if some of these don't sound challenging to you then you're probably well on your way to having a relationship that is vulnerable intimate and safe for both partners okay so the first thing is try something new together that you haven't done before so this could be something as extreme as skydiving together or something as simple as trying out a restaurant restaurant for a cuisine that you've never had before right so doing things together making new memories together creating new experiences helps bond us but it can be a little nerve-wracking when we're trying something new because that element of fear for the activity itself can actually spill over into our relationship if I'm terrified of skydiving and my partner is encouraging me to do that am I gonna hold resentment towards them or be frustrated towards them and really my primary emotion is fear and I don't know how to process that so make sure it's an activity that feels safe and okay for you guys to do together a little fear with your partner can go a long way because it helps build trust when you can look to them to be that safety net for you that familiarity that comfort in really strange situations the next one is draw your partner and explain your drawing what stands out to you the most about your partner physically now this is not an art in being Picasso or being an amazing artist it's really about sharing with your partner the beauty that you see in them right so finding ways to let that drawing emphasize their big heart or their beautiful body shape or their facial features that you love this way we can create an atmosphere where your partner knows that you see them as a physically beautiful being and there can even be ways to show the characteristic or personality traits that you love. So drawing a certain facial expression, for example, could represent their compassion. So drawing your partner can be a very intimate way to give them an inside view into your mind and how you see them. Pick a song that describes the way that you love your partner. And and this is different from having a song together because you want to find something that clearly expresses your feelings. Share it with your partner, play it for them, and let them know the lines or lyrics that stand out to you. I encourage you to print the lyrics out and highlight the ones that mean something to you so that way you can let them know in detail why those lyrics stand out to you and maybe even associated memories or moments that you equate to that line just to let them know that even when you're hearing music they're still on your mind. Now this one's a little bit more sensual and for physical intimacy but you could buy a bunch of food items that have distinct or subtle flavors and then put them on different body parts and eat them off of your partner blindfolded. This is an, a trust building exercise, right? Because you're curious about where on their body it is, what it could possibly be, and then you talk a little bit about what you're tasting. This is just a sensual moment. You could do it with candles, you can do it with music, but this is a way for building that physical intimacy, allowing your partner to explore your body in a totally different way. There's something special about a person's body being your plate, and so doing that can create a very sensual space that actually helps build trust. The next one is grab a drink or whatever relaxes you if you don't drink and ask your partner taboo questions. It could be questions that you've always been afraid to ask or things that you've always wanted to say. Let's say you have questions about their dating history or questions about their childhood or questions about your future together. 
In certain situations, those questions can feel uncomfortable to ask, or maybe you feel like you really never have the time to do it, or you never want to rock the boat and mess up a good moment. By establishing this time as a time that you can ask those things safely, make sure that you have them prepared in advance and you ask them, take turns asking each other questions. And again, you need to evaluate, you know, your own emotional well-being, right? Like is your blood pressure rising? Are you really uncomfortable? Are you blushing? You know, and can you pinpoint why? If this is a safe space, maybe you can communicate to your partner why this is uncomfortable for you to answer or share why it's uncomfortable for you to ask. In those moments, you want to be as distraction free as possible. It's best if you don't have a movie going or you're not on your phone or you guys aren't multitasking. But if that helps break the tension, maybe you do have another activity going. Maybe you're painting together, for example, and having these conversations. You guys know yourselves. So pick a way to make this actually a safe environment for both of you and create a relaxing safe space where you can just kind of talk about anything. That's another activity that very clearly builds emotional intimacy. This is one I love. Recreate a special moment in your dating history, whether it be your wedding or proposal or the first date you ever had. Recreate that moment. If you can find clothes that look like what you had on that day, maybe you still have the clothes and reenact it right and let's say things didn't go perfectly you could either try to do it and what it would have looked like if it was perfect or you can do it exactly how it was as you remember it and just have something to laugh about while you're recreating that moment think about how have things changed since then it's a great time to talk about evolution maybe things have turned out for the worse maybe things have turned out even better than you imagined but allowing that conversation and making sure that you allow your partner to express their feelings and create a safe space for them by holding resentment, asking questions and being curious as opposed to being defensive. This is a great way to learn more about what they like and don't like in the relationship so that you guys can continue evolving in a positive way. Celebrating those moments in our relationships that we've grown from or that bring us joy, the more we can emphasize and think about those things, the better the atmosphere of fondness that we're creating within our relationship. Those are all of the activities that I'm recommending to you. If you have other activities that you do with your partner or for therapists that you do with your couples, please put those in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. And I know it could be useful for someone else that is looking for more ideas. I encourage you all to use Valentine's Day to build on your relationships and to help your couple strengthen their relationships if you're working with them. Again, my name is Stephanie Aitanyapile, Steph on here for short. I ask that you like this video, comment your favorite activity. I just love to interact with you guys. Subscribe to my channel and I appreciate you for watching all the way until the end. That actually really, really helps me. Happy Valentine's Day.